Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. I am terribly sorry about what my skin is doing right now. I've been going through a phase that has been lasting for weeks of just like squeezing anything that I see. It's been a major problem and I always say don't touch it and I just can't help it. I tell myself if you touch that this is what it's going to turn into, no matter how much you think you can fix it. So I'm pretty sad about the situation and hopefully I've learned my lesson and will keep my hands off my face. In the meantime, I will be turning these into beauty marks. <laughs> Sorry for that little digression, back on track. Today we are reviewing and demoing the new Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. We have the Hourglass store here at NYC in Soho. It is the first store, uh, brick and mortar store on the East Coast. I believe there's one in California somewhere, I'm not too sure. At the time, last Saturday, a few days ago, this was not on the Sephora website and they had these in store and they were very nice enough to sell it to me and I've been using it for the last uh, few days and oh my god. I'll also be going over my updated foundation routine using the Vanish Stick foundation and all that good stuff. You want to see how the Veil Translucent Powder looks, works, and performs, then keep on watching. I'm gonna tell you right now, this little baby is a splurge. Typically with loose powders, you get one ounce of product. In the veil, you only get 0 .36 ounces for $46. Laura Mercier, you get one ounce of product for $38. And I get it, that is a lot of money for a loose powder. I think the reason why they, well first of all, Hourglass is one of the more expensive brands that Sephora carries, the more expensive brands in general. Their whole concept is based on creating different effects of lights. You got candlelight, you got mood light, you got a dim light, and all their powders are made in Italy and they're like, I'm not sure hand poured is the right phrase to use. They're intricately crafted and I think that's why the price point is higher on the scale. This powder is talc free. It does have, it is said to have diamond powder in this as well to provide radius without the flashback. I have set all over my face with this but because there is so little product, I primarily apply this to my under eyes where I want that radiance to to work well. The other parts of my face, I apply either my Makeup Forever or my Giorgio Armani to set the foundation. I have my skin prepped with my uh, Neogen Daylight Protection and also a little bit of the Biosense Squalene Rose Oil and Vitamin C. I let that sit for like a half an hour because I went out to have breakfast. I let it sink. And I think we're ready to get in. Oh, look at these nice juicy blemishes. Eyebrows are already done. I used my Benefit Goof Proof in number six, set around and card with my NARS Soft Matte in Ginger. When I went to the store to check out the uh, veil, I also managed to pick up uh, two Vanish Stick foundations because I needed more? No. I wanted to experiment with a lighter shade and a contour shade. In addition to Honey and Warm Honey that I have been using, I also picked up Sand and Natural Amber. So I'm gonna apply these two with my huge honey. I put this like not so close to my under eye, but still inner part of my face. Try to cover these suckers up. Oh my God, so bad. Like that one is so bad. Oh. Okay, this should be reason enough for me to not touch my face. Like when I get home today, I take my makeup off and I do not lay a finger on my skin. If this is what happens. <laughs> Going in with warm honey, just more towards the outer perimeters and also over more of my blemishes to build up the coverage. What I love about this foundation is some of you mentioned that you weren't crazy about it, is that the fact it could provide beautiful coverage without looking cakey or foundation-like. I found that my skin has been loving this formula. I understand those who are not crazy about it because it's not the most, even though it says it is long lasting, depending on your skin type, it does it can't, or it's not rather long lasting. Can't talk today. Using my good old Wayne Goss number one from their anniversary set. 
I recently reviewed the Cover of X Power Play Foundation, which I liked. Some of you had mentioned that even with your dry skin that it performed well, which is good to hear. I'm not going to be picking it up anytime soon. And while I was playing with it, I initially thought that it was a better match for me than my hourglass, but I found that when foundations aren't exactly my skin color, when I apply it all over, it lightens me up a little too much. With this is a touch warmer, more golden. And when I apply my concealer and all that, it evens out. Placing a little more of my warm honey to these areas that need more coverage. But again, I'll turn these into beauty marks. A tip I got from Desi Perkins, who turns all her blemishes into like freckles or, or beauty marks, which I think is an effective strategy. Even though I look a little orange on camera, I'm not sure if it's if you see orange. But in real life, I, I like how the Honey Warm Honey blends into my skin and gives me just a touch more warmth, more gold. Okay, now I'll take sand which is a, a lighter shade, but it's reasonable. Not so much to right under my eye, but right here to this area, down the center of my nose, a little here on the forehead. Okay, this is the Smith 130, only because it's a smaller brush and a little more accurate in placing this shade. See, I love the light that it provides. It's not insanely light, which is what I try to steer away from, despite the uh, beauty influencer trend to go super light under your eyes. I think it's not necessary. I mean, if you're doing like an avant-garde photo shoot or you have to kick up the light under your eye for it to show as contrast on the photograph, probably than necessary but in real life finger to finish off the blending especially around here this is the shade that blew me away natural amber i could have went golden amber which is warmer but because i layer over bronzer it's just the right amount of depth to provide that contour shade without looking too overly contoured when i first apply it you're like that doesn't do anything but it does right here See, I feel that's a really nice shade for my undertone to contour with. It's more on the neutral side, but not totally cool. Because I find even with contouring, you still have to be aligned with your undertone. I wouldn't pick something super cool and neutral because it'll just end up looking muddy on my skin. Whereas someone else that's cooler in undertone, it will make more sense to get a shade like that. See how pretty that is? I think it's really nice. It gives the right amount of uh, depth and contrast, but it's not insane. Here on my jaw. And this is a lot of foundation, but I feel my skin still manages to look uh, skin-like, not textured, not overly made up. Because I applied the sand under my eyes, I'm taking a little bit of my Laura Mercier the Flawless Fusion Ultra Long Wear Concealer in the shade 3W. Right under. So right here. Oh my god, what is going on out there? Sorry about the noise, guys. There has been non-stop construction going on on my block and it has been very challenging to film. Beauty sponge. I got this shit from Makeup Shayla, the leftover concealer you place under your contour to help clean it up a little bit. And then whatever harsh edges you see, I just take the beauty sponge to help diffuse those lines. A while back, I also picked up their Vanish Flash Highlighting Stick in the shade Champagne Flash, which I've also been loving. I've just been on like an hourglass kick. It's a little insane. I like to do this after I apply my concealer. I take my finger and lightly blend right on the cheekbone. And I think is a really beautiful shade. It's very, it's not light. It definitely gives you that highlight, but I feel an ideal formula if you were just applying to bare skin or if you wanted to, if working with a foundation, 
to have a dewy finish. We're not done with this highlighting, man. This is this is just layer one, okay? How are we looking? How are we looking? Getting to the powder soon. I made sure to leave a timestamp in the beginning because you know, you know how I love to talk. Then I take their brilliant strobe light, their ambient highlighting powder. I got the mini. Take my sponge and just lightly set the champagne flash with that brilliant color. I feel the hourglass highlighters are not very popular because they're not that usual metallic high shimmer finish, which I appreciate because I love this effect. I feel it's more realistic, more user-friendly. Lots of times with these powder textures, they just kind of sit on your skin. This melts into it and provides that lit from within glow, which I prefer. I get it though, some days you want that pow wow wham blam, blam, wham bam highlight, but sometimes you just want to, you know, why? Okay, here we go the product the featured product first of all this the inside of this the, the sifter it has the h stands for hourglass of course signature metallic brown shade for the the lid as it is with a lot of their compacts you see the yellow tint present in the powder it's going to be very brightening very soft it definitely has a radiance to it it's it's very hard for the camera to pick up what I'll do now is first make sure these creases are blended and without disrupting the highlighting portion I like to actually take some into my hand make sure they're clean and then I take my beauty sponge and right under the eye I go it's very finely milled so it melts into the skin instantly and it just has a beautiful brightening effect and very blurring. This is what it looks like with the powder. This is no powder. This is with the Veil Translucent. It's very expensive if you feel that the loose powder that you currently have does what it needs to do. It sets your makeup. It's still brightening in some way. Yes, you don't need this, but girl, I'm all for it. I'm all for the mineral veil or just the veil. The magic veil over my nose as well. I accidentally used the side of the sponge that I applied my highlighter with, so I have a little bit of sparkle on my nose, but that's okay. I also take the powder to areas that crease my smile lines under my eyes that we just did around the chin and forehead. I still want this foundation to last. Now, I found that it's better suited for creating that radiance. If you have dry skin, this will be optimal for you. If you are combination to oily, I don't think it's worth getting because if you're going to spend $46 on a powder just to set your under eyes with, you might as well just get a powder for less that still will set your under eyes. Not dry them out, but you're able to still set the rest of your face with the same powder. Although it says that it sets makeup beautifully, it blurs the pores, it gives you that filtered finish. Let's go over the spec, shall we? On the Sephora website, this powder is said to blur the appearance of pores, fine lines, and wrinkles for an airbrush finish. The innovative gold sifter and custom cap allow for the perfect amount of product to be dispensed. The formula is infused with diamond powder for the most refined light refraction without any flashback and sets makeup for longer wear. Okay, so longer wear. Great. This translucent powder formulated without talc leaves an invisible finish and is perfect for all skin tones. It's not going to set the makeup, I think, as well as the Laura Mercier. I found yesterday when I set the rest of my face with it, the coverage I feel didn't last as long as if I were to set it with my Giorgio Armani or my Makeup Forever Pro finish. This is springtime when we get more into our summer months. Maybe I would use this to set the rest of my face if I don't want such a, a lockdown type of hold on my skin that I want that radiance, that dew, that I think will be great for that purpose, especially if I were to apply this over maybe a tinted moisturizer instead of a foundation stick. That's how I'm feeling about it right now. But again, I wanted to review this powder for you. I am a huge fan of Hourglass. I love their products. I think they're gorgeous. I had to pick this up and I feel 
for what it says it's going to do. It does provide beautiful radiance lit from within effect and glow without the chalkiness, without looking heavy, textured, or cakey. We'll take my Makeup Forever Pro Finish Powder in the shade. I gotta flip over the pan. Hold on. I'm going with number 163 to set the rest of my face. Got a long day today. I'm taking my Luxie 520 taper brush. I'm just going over lightly the portions of my face that I did not set with the Veil Loose. The Pro Finish is going to apply a little bit of more coverage as well as kick up the holding power of the vanish stick. And you see that our highlighting that we did before setting the under eyes is still more or less intact, it's still showing. Now I'm going to go in with my Radiant Bronze Light, which I forever ago tried in store, but I think I wasn't crazy about it because I already have bronzer on, and when I applied this, it looked orange on me. I found out though from using different bronzers over the years that the warmer shades flatter me the best. Despite the fact that people tend to lean more towards neutral shades because they don't want to look orange, but because of my undertone, it looks flattering on me. And this is a gorgeous formula. Again, it applies like skin, is feather light. And again, because the natural amber wasn't too warm when I apply the radiant light, it comes to the right amount of sun-kissed warmth that doesn't make me look orange overall. And I just love the texture. Despite the fact that we applied four foundations, a pro finish powder, and now bronzer. And just, just ignore that little guy. But I'm going to come in close. Still feel like my skin looks really nice. It looks really smooth. It doesn't look textured. It doesn't look cakey. And I just think that's all due to these, you're so far. I feel that's due to the formula of these powders. They're very light, but highly effective in providing beautiful color, pigmentation. Now, you guessed it, more hourglass. I'm a little crazy. Going in with their ambient strobe lighting blush in Iridescent Flash. I thought this was the most flattering shade for my skin tone. It's like a, a rosy mauve plum in that category. Using my Morphe E4, I'm gonna take a couple of swirls and then right between the highlight and the bronzer, brush that in. And because these powders are marbleized, each pan compact is very different from the next. I just think that's a beautiful flush from within shade. Has a little bit of radiance to it, which I think provides really nice light to the cheekbones. This is not Hourglass, but this is the NARS, their newest highlighter, which I have been dying over. I know they're sold in China. You can yell at me down below. This was made in Italy, but because it is sold in China, they have to test on animals because their products are sold in China. Now, there are people who feel even though something is cruelty-free but made in China, they wouldn't buy that either because of the ingredients and the standards and all that other stuff. I love NARS, and I know that's a very poor reason to still buy a brand that is sold in China, but perhaps we can hope that this course of action NARS took sparked up the conversation and will encourage those, the powers that be, to change those laws so that China no longer has to rely on animal testing to sell safe products to their consumers. You would think, you know, that's, that's, what, we're, that's what we're trying to head towards. But look at that, I mean, again, it doesn't sit on your skin. It melts into the skin, but provides this beautiful radiance. It doesn't swatch crazy you swatch it and you're like oh but it layers beautifully especially because i already had like two highlighters on i've been using this non-stop and i absolutely love it i'm going to do my eyes 
everything else and I'll be right back. And we're back with the finished look. Managed to do my eyes, mascara, lips. I put on a little more uh, pinky duochrome highlighter on my cheeks to tie in the eye look. What do we think, friends? I, I know the... This is very expensive and it's a splurge. I love to review products and just to help you give guidance in terms of what you're thinking about buying, how it performs, and it is hard to test a uh, loose powder. Even though Sephora has those little containers, I feel they're better suited for liquid formulas and formulas in general that are just easier to store in those little containers. Loose powder, get a little complicated. And if you were thinking about getting it and you just wanted to see it on in action, on skin. Let me get a little closer. It's very bright in front of my window, but I just want to give a close up here. Just so you can kind of see what's happening under my eyes being set with the veil loose powder. I love how it makes my under eyes look. I think it's very smoothing. It provides that radiance again without uh, looking chalky. It's not going to cause flashback because of the diamond dust. If you feel you really need this in your life and the loose powders you've tried before don't provide those benefits, then yes, the veil is definitely worth a try. If it's in your budget to drop $46 on 0.36 ounces of loose powder, then then that's up to you. If you already have the Laura Mercier and or the Patrick's powder or a uh, beauty bakery. I do think Veil is a lot more uh, radiant than those powders. I like Patrick's powder because of its peach tint and it is very finely milled and I feel uh, more blurring than the Laura Mercier because of its because of its texture. That could be up to discussion. I'm happy I bought this because again, I love Hourglass. I love their vanish stick. I love all of their powders just because of how they make the skin look very ethereal uh, with the whole lighting concept and their formulas being marbleized all those components I feel make for a beautiful complexion and I get that it's very up the price scale and if you don't need this powder then you don't buy it. I'm happy that I bought it. I love what it does and I think also this is suited for skin types that don't benefit well from talc or any of those drying ingredients. The other uh, powder that's very blurring in effect is the Cover FX Perfect Setting Powder that also does not contain talc. It contains a lot of antioxidant extracts that help shield the skin from environmental distress. And I think that's a really nice alternative. You, I think you get, I'm not sure how much you get per ounce at the price. I'll put it up here next to me so you can get a, little, a better idea of what you get with what you buy and figure outings of it all. This I re I think recently launched yesterday on Sephora's website but I was lucky enough to have purchased this from the actual Hourglass store in advance before it hit the online shopping. I love it. I love how it looks. I'm a fan of it. I'm happy that I bought it. $46 is awfully expensive for 0.36 ounces. I think mainly it's because of the ingredients, how the powder was crafted and the packaging i mean without a doubt this this gold inset i mean it is to die for it basically pulls you into this dimension of gold like you want this come in to me that's what it's telling me and i fell for it bought her love her keeping her yay all suggestions are welcome down below in terms of other complexion products that you've been using that you've been loving. Let me know if you were thinking about picking up the Veil Loose Powder from Hourglass. If you by chance have it already, how you've been liking it. Please ask me all questions if you feel I need to do another video with more close-ups. Uh, anything I can do to help you decide if you want to buy this powder or not. Let's hear it. Thank you friends so much for watching. I hope this video helped. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And until then, I'll see you on here again with another review chat demo. Get ready with me. Take care and I'll see you again soon.